Will you join me in the Gospel of John today, the 11th chapter, verses 38 through 44. Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Today is the fifth part in a series about belief. For the period of Lent, we have been talking about belief. In John, he challenges us to believe. There are shades of belief. Some people may get A plus, others were struggling on the journey. Today in this final series, I'm using the sermonic theme of the shoes, the shoes. Deborah Fieldman was born into an ultra orthodox Jewish community, also known more appropriately, appropriately as a Hasidic community. Founded by mostly Hungarian Holocaust survivors that believe the Holocaust was a punishment for the assimilation and Zionism that they had exhibited in their faith. They believed that they brought the Holocaust on themselves because of their unfaithfulness toward their God. When they immigrated to the United States of America, they designed a new ghetto, one of the biggest ones in Brooklyn, New York City. They believed the only way to prevent a Holocaust from happening again, a punishment from happening, they needed to be even stricter in their lifestyle than they had ever been before. Every single rule that they designed was an extreme interpretation of a Jewish law. And they lived this strict interpretation because they believed they were appeasing God by doing so and that God would have mercy on them and that this would quell God's anger, and that they would not have to experience God's anger again, as in the Holocaust. Deborah Fieldman was only 17 years old when a matchmaker was brought in to find her a suitable husband. As part of the marriage ceremony, a lady's head is shaved the day after she gets married. Deborah would wear this wig, but Deborah, as her hair was shaved off her head, all the way off. She cried as she saw her hair encased about her on the floor. Every month after a woman has gone off of her menstruation cycle, she goes through a ritual bath and her head is shaved again. Both women and men receive a minimum education in the Hasidic movement because they're taught religiously about the Talmud and how to live a committed life to God. They observed and watched, and any infractions can result in very strict consequences. Deborah had been raised without her mom who had left. Her mom was a poor Jew and had been married off to her father who had severe mental issues. Finding it hard to live with her father, her mom left, but was not able to take her child. This week, Netflix came out with a more entertaining version called The Unorthodox. When Deborah found it impossible to live in the shoes she had been given, she fled the Hasidic Jewish community, the largest of its kind. 
For Deborah, it became impossible to wear the shoes that she had been given. I want to talk about shoes, the shoes that sometimes we're giving that feel restrictive and hard to wear. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Jesus had some pretty big shoes to fill. Yeah, his shoes were even bigger than the president. Jesus had some big shoes to fill. People had all kinds of expectations of Jesus. I bet even you have some expectations of Jesus. As we are nearing the end of this Lent season and also nearing the end of Jesus' life, there are all sorts of expectations that unfold to us in the four Gospels. The Pharisees wanted him to observe the Sabbath and all kinds of rules. The people wanted miracles and signs, even Mary and Martha. The Jews wanted autonomy and relief. His family wanted time and respect. The disciples wanted him to linger and simply to understand what he was talking about. Nicodemus wanted to know what it meant to be saved. The woman at the well wanted to know why he was all up in her space. And even after all of that, even after all of that, what was on many people's mind is, are you the one even? Are you the one that we've been waiting for? Are you the one we've been looking out for? Are you the one that's been referred to in the Old Testament? Expectations, 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 and yet another pair of shoes to fill. In this biblical text today, Mary and Martha send word to Jesus to come and heal their brother. And every visitor that sat around them had an expectation too. And then their brother dies. And Jesus still ain't got to the scene. Expectations, because he said he would. And where is he anyway? I don't know if you can see these shoes sitting up here. I don't know if Joe and Rachel and Edith were wondering about these shoes. I bought these shoes about two years ago. I consider myself a late developer because they say a woman in her shoes, you know, have a unique relationship. But anyway, I did finally arrive. I was in Nordstrom Rack one day, and if you need any help getting your shoe groove on, I recommend you go to Nordstrom Rack. So I was in Nordstrom Rack when I saw these shoes. I thought, the heel is not too high. It's not too low. Since I'm someone that likes it kind of low to the ground, I thought that this might be a little bit of a stretch, but it wasn't too tall that there was hope for me yet. I liked when I put them on. I walked around. I thought it gave my leg a nice angle. I also liked them, but I was walking on carpet, and I was walking for a short distance. I decided that I would purchase these shoes. I'd bring them home. I'd wait for the two to three month cycle where it's warm in Chicago and you can paint your toenails and look cute and go out and all of that. And so when it was time, I put these shoes on and I started walking. And after a while, I started feeling a little bit stressed. The shoes were a little bit higher than I thought they were in the store. They looked low, but when I put my feet in them, they seemed a little bit more uncomfortable than I was anticipating. Due to the height, they often made me feel like they were trying to propel me into some kind of prophetic future that I was not trying to go. I had to deliberate, what am I gonna do with these beautiful shoes that I've only worn about two times? After a few more tries, it became increasingly real that these were not the shoes for me. I was going to have to step out of them. Sometimes the shoes that are given to us don't feel right. They're either too high, they're too big, they're too tight, they're too narrow, or whatever. They just don't feel good on our feet. But sometimes the expectations that linger in the air or hang on the doorknob or that are handed to us or maybe even the ones we're born into cut off circulation and limit us because of who we think we are. Like Deborah, often religion has done an excellent job of handing people shoes that feel uncomfortable to their feet. 
handing people shoes that don't fit so nicely. Don't do this. God will not be pleased. Don't go there. God will send a plague. Often religion has boxed folks in so much so that anything faintly associated with fun, God doesn't like. Shoes that feel too heavy to wear. Today, we are faced with a pandemic and the scope of this health crisis is inconceivable. People are trying to have all kinds of spins on what we are facing and many of our politicians have tried to minimize the scope of COVID-19, which are shoes that just don't fit our feet. This health crisis is big because it is big. We are in the midst of something big and honestly at times it may feel scary. And maybe I'm the only pastor or leader saying it, but this is scary. In three weeks, because I follow the news, we've gone from being number eight in confirmed cases to number six in being confirmed cases to number three in being confirmed cases to now being number one over China and Italy in confirmed cases. In our own city, they're talking about taking the McCormick Center home to the largest conferences and converting it into a 3,000 bed hospital. It's big because it is big. The scope of this pandemic is big. So I wanna invite you to wear a new pair of shoes today. No, I'm not gonna throw it. <laughs> I might hit Wei Jin in the head and then we'd have another problem. Get rid of these shoes now. <laughs> okay, you guys know I can go off track sometime. I'm gonna invite you to wear a different pair of shoes today. I'm gonna invite you to wear a size that perhaps fits your feet and fits your journey. Acknowledge where you are on this journey. Acknowledge the loss. Kids get it so right. I was listening to a kid this week say, I'm not going to get to have my birthday party. Admit and acknowledge the loss that is in your life. For someone else, it may be bigger than a birthday party, but that's still a loss for that kid. Some of my colleagues text me this week about a colleague who went into the hospital, who is in isolation. And this morning, I got the news that she's supposed to come home tomorrow. Acknowledge where you are. Acknowledge what you feel. Acknowledge how you feel. Acknowledge that it kind of sucks that we can't be together. Acknowledge that next Sunday will be Palm Sunday and the way it looks, you'll be at home and we'll be here. Acknowledge to God, acknowledge to yourself and acknowledge to loved ones you trust what you feel. I promise you, God can handle your anguish, God can handle your disappointments, God can handle your fear, God can handle your anger. Let's be honest about what we feel in our emotions, our bodies, and even spiritually. Second, I invite you to wear shoes that allow you to think about somebody else. It always improves our condition to think about somebody else besides ourselves and our loved ones. And it's still our Christian duty, what we've been called to do to care for the most vulnerable. In the biblical days, often the vulnerable were the widows or the physically handicapped, like we read about the blind man last Sunday. Who is that? Who are those people for us today? Maybe the people that are presently unemployed maybe the people that are employed and have to interface with the public, maybe the restaurant workers who can no longer go to work, maybe the people on the front line, maybe it's you. Do something for someone else without any expectation or anything in return. Write a card, text an emoji, bake a cake, and then pack it up and deliver it to people. 
do a TikTok dance, make some phone calls, pick up someone's groceries, send someone money through Zelle or the Cash App who is out of work, listen to somebody, pray on the phone with someone, cry with someone, be there for someone, sing a song. So I need 10 of you listening today to record yourself singing this little light of mine. I may have two over there. I need 10 people to record this little light of mine. We're gonna do a cute little video. Now, this is not for people that can sing, although people that can sing should record. It's for anybody that just wants to have a little fun. Record yourself at home singing this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light. I'll be sending more information, but if you're one of those people, respond right now so I can see it on Facebook Live and send you more information. I need 10 people. Those are shoes you can wear. Let's have a little bit of fun. Third, I'm offering shoes to nourish your soul. A lot of us have been watching a lot of news. I have friends like we are cronies. We are following every article. Hey, balance it out. It's not good to watch too much news and not balance it out. You might want to watch some news, but read your Bible or read some inspirational material. You might want to watch some news, but it's important to meditate and to pray. It's important to nourish your soul. It's important to feed your spirit. It's important to listen to uplifting words and music and moments. One of our members is doing yoga. Now they have YouTube videos of people offering yoga and doing exercise in your home. Join a prayer call or ask someone to be a prayer partner with you. I I'm looking for a prayer partner, so if you don't have one, you can even call me. Make these daily activities in your life. Build your YouTube playlist. Make a playlist that this is it. These are your 10 songs to get you started each day. Or you can join us Wednesday. Every Wednesday we have Uplift at Zoom and we tell jokes and we check in and we pray for one another. We'd love to have you join us this week. Last, the shoes that God calls us to wear in John is one of belief. For this Lent season, I've been calling you all to remember what it is you believe and hold on to it. For many, we believe in Jesus and the presence of him with us now in the midst of these disturbing times. For some, we believe in love and the power of love in the bleakest of times. For some, we believe in the strength of our faith community. We're united. Those ties and bonds sustain us through critical times. Belief roots us. Belief anchors us so we will not be thrown by the winds and the waves. It's important to believe in something, to be anchored in something. Jesus finally shows up wearing his own shoes. Folks are disappointed in him because he has failed to meet the expectations they had of him. He tells them to take away the stone. He says, I did not tell you to believe. I told you to believe so you would believe in God's glory. I asked you to believe. That's your job. Believe. Even when it looks like the situation is dead, believe even when it doesn't feel like it counts. Believe even when it seems like our life will be changed forever. Believe even when people die. Believe. I ask you to believe. Believing is hard work. It's not hard when everything's going great. But belief is hard when everything seems like it's going wrong. It's hard. But Jesus says in the text today, I ask you to believe. You see, Jesus did what he needed to do for himself. And then he showed up. Not meeting anybody else's expectations, but he showed up for others he often rejected the shoes that others gave to him, and they get upset for a minute, but they come around. My work, said Jesus, is to do and wear the shoes of the one who sent me. He had a clear understanding of the shoes God had given him and his time on earth. 
Maybe this time we won't put on the shoes that are driven by fear, referred to in our litany today. Maybe this time we won't put on the shoes of control and limitations. Maybe like Jesus, we can believe and say, I have come showing grace and kindness to the stranger. Maybe this time we'll get it right. We'll learn from all the other epidemics. Maybe this time we will wear our own shoes and try our very best to be a follower of Christ. Amen.